Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Pepperoni Pizza on the Kamado Joe Pellet Joe. Well, for as many pizzas as we've cooked on this channel, one that we've never done is a pepperoni pizza. I know that sounds maybe not super exciting, but as someone with two little kids at home, I know how popular this pizza is for a lot of the families out there. And even though this is a very simple thing, it kind of gives us the opportunity to focus on some of the fundamentals of pizza making, from mixing that dough to shaping it, uh, preparing a very simple but flavorful and fairly quick pizza sauce. And then for us today, we're gonna be utilizing the dojo attachment on the Kamado Joe pellet Joe, uh, which is basically works as a deck oven. And I've worked in pizza restaurants where this is what you would cook your pizza in. It goes a bit quicker than your conventional oven at home. Not quite as fast as a wood-fired oven, but a lot more fun than just firing up the oven in the house. So let's go ahead and get started by mixing up some dough. So we're gonna start by scaling out our four ingredients for our pizza dough. Our water should be between 110 and 115 Fahrenheit, so we're right there. We're gonna need 650 grams of water. So we have that water warm, so it kind of kick-starts this yeast, which is the next thing that we're gonna add. And we're gonna do 10 grams of yeast. So this is a double batch of my normal recipe. It'll make four good-sized pizzas. And we're talking like 12 inches. And then typically after I add the yeast, we sprinkle that over the water, just want to let it sit for about five minutes or so, just really start to kick off, uh, wake up that yeast. It's, a, it's a, a living thing that needs to start to create this foam, uh, and that's what's going to give us all that rise in our dough. So just chill out for about five minutes, then we'll add our flour and our salt. All right, now yeast is looking kind of foamy and funky, so we're going to go ahead and add our flour. We got one kilo of Caputo double lot flour. This is a high protein flour protein content coming in at over 13%, which makes it great for stretching into pizzas. The last thing we gotta add is about 20 grams of salt. And we're just using the Jacobson kosher salt, kosher sea salt here. It's important to do this in that specific order because that yeast does need to wake up, start to come alive in the water before you can hit it with any salt because the salt's gonna kill off any of that action if they touch right off the bat. But at this point, we know that we're going, we're good. We can add our flour, our salt, and start mixing. I'm gonna go on second speed here, just until this forms into a ball, and set a timer for eight minutes and let it knead and mix itself here in the KitchenAid for eight minutes. So right about here, everything starts to clear the sides of the bowl. That's when we'll set our timer. All right, so we've had a good amount of time now to start to develop this gluten. What we need to do next is go ahead and let this ferment or rise, double in size. So we're gonna take this out of our bowl here. We're gonna transfer it into a grease container. It's gonna use a little olive oil spray. And we're gonna put it in this Cambro container here though, but you could do it in a bowl at home, whatever you have. I like this container because I can pretty much see exactly when it's doubled in size. Like it's gonna start off around the two quart level. When we hit about the four quart level, which will probably be in about an hour and a half, two hours, this will be ready to divide. All right, so this stuff has doubled in size, even a little bit more now. It's starting to fall back down. Uh, it's gone a little bit over. It's gonna be fine though. We're gonna turn this out and divide this into four roughly equal portions for our four dough balls. So just gonna quarter this up with our bench knife here. And then we're gonna take each one of these pieces, form it into a dough ball. We don't really need flour at this point. We're gonna start just kind of working this around, folding that dough underneath itself until we get a nice smooth top. You can tighten it up just a little bit by rolling it on the bench and kind of pinch that bottom together, and that's what it should look like, nice and smooth on top. All right, so all four shaped into roughly equal sized balls here. 
these are going to need to rest. So we're going to cover these with some plastic wrap. In fact, let's go ahead and move them to a pan. We're going to put some plastic wrap on top so we don't dry out the skin, form a skin on the top. And then these need to rest at least 30 minutes before they're ready to stretch. Now this is a quick dough recipe. Uh, you certainly could do the long ferment part that we did for about an hour and a half, two hours overnight if you threw it in the fridge, start to develop even a little bit more flavor. But the great thing about this recipe is you're ready to cook dinner, I mean, within a couple of hours from when you start this. So now that our dough's on the way, we need to make sure that the grill's gonna be ready for us when we are ready for the grill. Today we're cooking on the Kamado Joe Pellet Joe. I've had it set to about 450 degrees, uh, just coming up to temp. Just very normal setup at this point. And now it's time for us to actually get the dojo in place and we're gonna crank that temperature up to 600. So we're gonna actually load the dojo on top of the already preheated grill here. Now this is designed for the classic Kamados, but it does fit on the Pellet Joe as well. You'll notice a little bit of gap back here if you're looking closely. It's nothing to worry about. There's still gonna be plenty of heat inside. But what we need to do to trap that heat inside is take our control cap, and we're actually gonna close it. So we're gonna shut off the airflow completely, which means that heat is now trapped in the dome. It'll come out the front as it needs to, uh, but that's what's really gonna to help to brown the top of this. And we're gonna go ahead and take that temperature up to 600 now. Now while that dojo's preheating, we're gonna to put together our pizza sauce. So four easy ingredients for our pizza sauce here. We've got one big can of San Marzano tomatoes. We're gonna to add to that a tablespoon of our Cattleman's Grill Italiana seasoning. We're gonna do one tablespoon of our Sicilian BVOO. Great flavor to this, also helps to carry those flavors as that fat coats your mouth. And then last, fourth and final ingredient is just a clove of garlic. And that just needs to be crushed, not even all the way. We're gonna throw this into the blender and let it break down completely. All right, so let's blitz that up. Easy. I'm just gonna pour all of this right into a pan, a Dutch oven, whatever you've got. We're using the enamel coated stob today. That's gonna come up to a simmer and start bubbling and splattering, which is really annoying. So we're gonna throw a screen on top. All right, this has been cooking down for probably about 12 minutes now. Uh, we're just looking at consistency, really. I don't want it too thick. I don't want it too thin. Somewhere in the middle. I like the way this is looking. We've had enough time for all those flavors to start to melt together in this sauce. So I'm going to cut this off now. We'll transfer it over to our container. All right, let's get set up to make some pizzas. All right, we've got our station all set up. I know that this pizza stone's hot. I just tempted it 550 degrees, so we're ready to get some pizza on the grill. All right, so we're gonna start by getting some flour down on our table. Go ahead and grab one of our dough balls here. Now you could roll this out with a pin if that's what you're comfortable. I'm gonna go ahead and stretch it by hand. If you really wanna like impress the kiddos, throw it up in the air a couple of times. They'll think that's pretty cool. I mean, until you drop it on the ground. So I'm just gonna stretch this over the backs of my hands, rotating, pulling gently. I have not chilled this down, so it's moving really easy. It's been out here at room temp. We're gonna make a fairly good sized pizza out of this one. All right, so before we go any further, I'm gonna hit this with some semolina. This helps kind of keep it moving. We don't want to get stuck. And then we'll go ahead and start putting our toppings on. We'll get started with our pizza sauce, which is still pretty warm. Not going to do too much of that. Look, this is a family pizza, so however your family likes it, that's what we're going to do right now. Nothing pretentious. Nothing uh, really super exciting about what we're doing, but just good quality 
pizza ingredients. So now for cheeses, I've got a low moisture mozzarella. We've grated up. We've got the fresh stuff, and this is really good. Uh, and then we've also got some provolone, some smoked provolone sliced up. Choose whatever you like. We're gonna start off with the low moisture. Again, not a fancy cheese by any means, but great for what it is. We'll go ahead and sprinkle in a little bit of the provolone on this as well. Provolone just got that extra little bit of a kick to it. Really great flavor. And then pepperonis. Today I got the little pepperonis that are kind of, they, they kind of shrink up into pepperoni cups as they cook, which I love. I don't know why that's a lot of fun for me. <laughs> But you could totally buy a whole hunk of pepperoni and dice it into cubes and then put that on here with your fresh mozzarella. There's a bunch of different ways that you can mix up what you're doing. Again, it's whatever your family is into. I've even got some green onions that I might put on the adult's pie unless the kids are into that too. A little hot sauce. This first one will do really basic though. Pepperoni, cheese. I'm gonna hit the crust with just a little bit of olive oil, some seasoning. So let's start up front here. Just gonna brush that on. This will help brown up a little bit. Also just tastes great. And it's gonna give us a, a little something for some toppings to stick to. Let's go ahead and hit this with a little bit of Parmesan at the edge. Do a little Parmesan crust on here. Let that bake right into the pizza dough. We'll shake a little bit more of that Italiano right on top of everything. Just great Italian herbs, spices, a bit of salt. So we're gonna go ahead and shoot this onto the peel now. Make sure that that's still moving. And let's get it right on the grill. We're gonna land this right in the center of that stone, which feels like it's a little bit toward the back of the grill. All right, we're about five minutes almost into this cook right now just to show you guys what's going on. Obviously we're getting some great melting going on. Underneath, we're not all the way cooked yet. I'm just gonna give this a spin halfway around so that the cold side goes to the back and vice versa. We'll wait it out until this is done. Again, we'll start with the floured surface. It's gonna kinda stretch this out, poke it down my hand a bit. I like to grab the edges, form your crust. Let's go around the circle there. Once I get all the way around, flip it up on the hands, just gently pulling, almost letting the weight do a lot of that work, that gravity. Now, a lot of times I get questions about my pizza sticking, what do I do? As you can see, we're not using a ton of flour here, but you need enough flour to make sure that it doesn't stick to the surface. Well, one of the things that you can do to really ensure that your pizza transfer is all right, is go ahead and just build it on the peel. So let's slide this off. We're gonna get some flour down on the peel, enough that we make sure that it's just gonna slide right off of there. And then we're gonna quickly build our pizza right here on the peel. And we'll do this one just slightly different this time. Still gonna do a pepperoni pizza, but I'm gonna throw a little hot sauce down with it. We we'll use the Fresh mozzarella. This is gonna be the grown-up pie. Fresh mozz would just tear it into pieces, place it around. Gonna do some uh, green onions on this one. And I don't want them on the very top where they might burn a little bit, so we're gonna put them down here on the sauce. Speaking of the sauce, let's go ahead and hit it with some hot sauce. Got a little bit of that Cattleman's Grill pit fire hot sauce. Add a little heat and a little tang. We'll come in with our pepperonis. I love this provolone too much to just pass it up, so we'll do a few of these on here as well. All right, let's get the edges again. Now this is where you gotta be careful. If you're gonna build on a peel, 
that's dangerous. That's going to stick. So we got to make sure that we clean up any spots where we get some oil or anything wet. If it's sauce, whatever it is, make sure it's not on your peel because it's going to make that transfer really difficult. All right, guys, here's our 10 minute pie. Fully cooked on the bottom, nicely brown. Cheese is completely melted. We got the pepperoni cups going on. And look at that, Parmesan baked into the crust. That's a pretty looking pizza. Now working quickly here, we got pie number two ready to go on. We'll set a five minute timer for that to spin it. All right guys, again, just under five minutes here on our pizza. It's about the same place as that last one was. Starting to get a little tougher on the bottom, starting to see some melting on the top. Needs a little more time. All right guys, this pizza, and it's looking pretty good. And we can see all of our fresh mozz is melted on top. So much more moisture in that, you can see as well. The bottom, holding strong, standing up well. Just go ahead and pull this off. All right, and then while this is hot, right off the grill, I'm gonna hit it with some parm on top. Just let that melt in. You can check out the differences between these two, both pepperoni pizzas. Obviously, one we use the low moisture mozzarella back here, and you can see, I mean, this looks a bit more like a New York slice, whereas this cheese is that kind of Neapolitan style. Just different types of cheese for different preferences. All right, let's go ahead and slice it up. We'll do some big slices on here. Now you can hear it's got the crunch going. But even on our high moisture mozzarella, and that's fresh out of the oven, that should still hold up, and it does. That's nice. A low moisture mozzarella, easy, great foldable pizza right there. Let's have a bite. It's classic. Mm. That crust has great chew to it. Great flavor in the pizza itself. I know pepperoni pizza is not super exciting, but honestly, it's one of those things that like, when I go to a new pizza place, I'm probably gonna judge that pizza place on its pepperoni pizza, how well it does that one thing. And this one's fantastic, it really is kind of that New York style with that cheese and that pepperoni. Our crust has got a little bit extra to chew to it, but this is the same crust that I can use for Neap Neapolitan style pizza as well. All right, we're gonna try the fresh mozzarella now. Oh man. So much more moisture in that mozzarella, for sure. Luckily, our dough is totally holding up to our crust here. The flavors are a little bit different here because you're getting that green onion, a little spice from that hot sauce. But I like that, it makes it a little bit more exciting. You're not gonna go wrong either way. There's a couple great ways to do pepperoni pizzas. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.